Hi, this is Yaffe Lavova, registered dietitian and owner of Baby Blue Nutrition and Toddler Test Kitchen. Welcome to Naptime Nutrition. Today we are talking about vitamins and minerals and how to choose a vitamin. So first I want to say that I, I am an intuitive eating dietitian, which means that I don't really believe in, in dieting and the active pursuit of weight loss. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because strictly speaking, with intuitive eating, we believe that all of your nutrition should come from food and that with a varied diet, you will meet all of your needs. Well, I take a little bit of issue with that, and I'll talk about why and why I do encourage a vitamin for pretty much everyone. Um, so here's the thing. Do you need a vitamin? Well, 52% of Americans take at least one nutritional supplement per day. Does that mean you need it? Everyone else is doing it. Well, half of everyone else is doing it. That doesn't actually tell us much. It just means that a lot of people do believe that you do need it, or at least are actually taking it. Um, vitamins are best from food. When you have your vitamins and your minerals from an actual whole food source, there's a lot more context going on there. I like to call it nutritional context. There's fiber, there are phytochemical phytochemicals and antioxidants. And all of this comes together to help you to absorb and utilize that nutrient in, in a more complex way, in a deeper way. And we don't necessarily understand everything that goes into that. And so science can't really replicate that with a bottle of pills. We can try, we can do our best, and there is reason to take a multivitamin, but it's really not going to be able to compete with a, a whole food source. So here's the thing. When your diet, when your nutrition intake, and when I say diet, I mean it in the most neutral term possible. I just mean the collection of food that enters your body in a given time. So when your nutrition intake is has a lot of variety in color and texture and flavor, there are a lot of different nutrients that are represented. All of those nutrients are ideally going into your body and being used effectively. But there is a lot that impacts the nutritional content of your food. Mass production, for example, farming practices can impact the nutrition in the food, soil quality, weather and climate, temperature, humidity, the amount of rainfall, um, the intensity of the light that the, the, the fruits and vegetables are exposed to as they grow. Their ripening location, did they ripen on the tree or did they ripen in a truck? Uh, travel and handling after it's been picked, time on the shelf, and residues of fertilizers and pesticides. This all affects your vitamin and mineral content. And that is why I recommend taking a multivitamin just to cover your bases, kind of as an insurance policy. So your body is for the most part, going to get rid of any nutrition that it doesn't need. And I'm talking about micronutrients here. Micronutrients are vitamins and minerals. Your macronutrients, which people people are more familiar with the term macronutrient, that's going to be your fiber, your carbohydrate, and your fat. So your micronutrients are the, the smaller pieces of, of nutrition that you get, your phytochemicals, antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals. And all of that is affected by the factors that I just mentioned. Is it completely destroyed? Well, probably not. It really does depend on which micronutrient you're talking about and the, the type of handling it's been through. So vitamin C, for example, is really dramatic. Vitamin C is affected by a lot of different kinds of processing. Your vitamin C level will be affected by chewing. Does that mean you should swallow your food whole? Should you swallow your orange segments whole? No, because it's not a safe way to eat and it's not an enjoyable way to eat. And above all, I push enjoyment. I'm a food enjoyment activist, and I, I will continue to steal that term from Michelle Redman of the Taste Workshop. So I like to, to suggest multivitamin as insurance to cover your bases. You definitely should be taking a multivitamin if you feel like your nutrition is lacking, if you've been dieting for a long time or otherwise food restricting, if you are older or if you have malabsorption from a certain disease like uh, like inflammatory bowel disease, or if there's been some kind of surgery such as a gastric bypass, or if you've had parts of your intestines removed, you really do need to be on a multivitamin to make sure that you are getting all of that nutrition that you need. 
So what's up with the safety of vitamins? A lot of people complain, well, the FDA doesn't regulate that particular vitamin. Well, the FDA really doesn't regulate much when it comes to vitamins and minerals for nutrition supplements. Um, it's a very complex issue, and I posted in the comments a, um, a wonderful blog that was put out by Nature Made. Not that I'm advocating any particular supplement brand in this segment, um, but they did do a great job of breaking down the different government entities and how um, how vitamins and minerals, how nutrition supplements are or are not regulated. So the FDA, Food and Drug Administration, the USDA, um, vitamins are not subject to approval or inspection. The responsibility falls completely on the manufacturer of that product. And what is their, what, what's their idea? Their idea is to sell their product. So sometimes there will be mistakes made on certain labels or certain advertising that isn't a hundred percent you know uh on board but the the usda and the fda they don't really touch that until it's on the shelf and they can really only say whether there's a falsification whether there is a vitamin saying this will fill in the blank not true statement okay the FDA is not authorized to review dietary supplements before they are marketed. So they have to be on the shelf before the FDA is going to touch them. This does not happen before they're marketed, which is why you have certain companies like USP, which is a third party company that will get in and evaluate the safety and the honesty of mm -hmm. a product. So that's something you can look for as well, the USPA seal, or USP seal. Um, so something else you want to look for when you're looking at vitamins, you want to look for appropriate daily value. Okay, what do I mean by that? Are, is the RDA, is the daily value, is this an accurate way to look at vitamins and determine if they're appropriate? Well, not really, but it's the best that we have. These numbers, a lot of them came from unethical research back, I believe, in the, in the 50s, maybe the 1930s to the 1950s, where prisoners were actually... Um, given shorter sentences if they participated in these trials and they were starvation trials. It's nothing that would be ethical these days, which is why we don't have really more up-to-date research. And this is the best we can go off of because it's not so ethical to reproduce them, especially given the numbers for kids. So no, I don't stick to the RDA values or the DVs, um, strictly speaking, but it is good to see um, in a certain vitamin if if you have 117% of your vitamin A, for example, or if you've got 5,000% of any given B vitamin. You wanna to stick to a, a supplement that has closest to 100% and doesn't go completely overboard with it, unless it's a dedicated supplement that was prescribed to you by a primary care physician who has your medical chart in front of them. Because sometimes mega dosing a certain supplement is appropriate, but it is never appropriate for me or anyone else to tell you over Facebook without seeing your medical chart that it's appropriate to take that level. That information needs to come directly from a healthcare practitioner who has your history and your information in front of them. So there's that. Um, some, some nutrients like calcium, like magnesium, like choline are very bulky. And so that's why when you look at the nutrition label, you're not going to see a lot of calcium in a multivitamin. The, the highest quality multivitamin is still only going to have maybe 30% of your daily value for calcium. So what do you do with that for calcium, magnesium, and choline? You want to make sure that you're getting those from your food sources. If there's a problem, you can take that supplementally, but there are problems with taking isolated supplements as well. So good sources of calcium. Um, a lot of vegetables actually have calcium the leafy green vegetables, and also dairy, and a sneaky source of very good calcium is tofu. Tofu has a significant amount of calcium because of how it's packaged. Um, and also a lot of non-milks, um, a lot of milk substitutes have, have supplemented calcium in them as well. So you can still hit your calcium values no matter what kind of nutrition intake you are subscribing to. So, um, so you should consciously include them 
in your nutrition choices. Um, calcium, I mentioned where that is. Magnesium is also in a lot of leafy greens, a lot of vegetables, and choline as well. Um, and choline is kind of an overlooked nutrient. It's very important for, for neural development. It's an important methylator, which means that if you are taking non-methylated vitamins, which I'm going to get into in just a minute, it's important to have that that methyl donor. We're getting into some ochem here, but I'll spare you. Uh, I'll spare you the, the college lecture. Anyway, choline is very important to have. You're probably meeting your needs in your diet, but um, hopefully at some point I'm going to have a guest on to talk about why choline is important during pregnancy and how to make sure that your prenatal is taking care of you on that front. So the most at-risk nutrients are calcium, which I talked about, fiber, which is not going to be in a multivitamin. It's bulky and it needs to be either as a supplement or ideally you're taking in a lot of fruits and vegetables, which is going to provide you with the fiber that you need. And um, potassium as well. This is a big one. And you can find that in beans, dairy, concentrated tomato products and fruits. So let's talk about calcium supplementation for a second. I'm not sure if I've covered this specifically in Naptime Nutrition, but there was a controversy a couple of years back on calcium supplements causing, uh, causing heart problems. And the, the issue is that isolated supplements, when they're not found in their normal nutritional context, which I talked about um, in, in the way that they normally come. So for instance, milk has a lot of calcium in it. When you isolate calcium and it's all of a sudden not coming with the nutrients that help it get absorbed and properly utilized in the body, it can go badly. So what was found is that people who were taking isolated calcium supplements were finding calcification of soft tissue, which also was calcification as, as plaque in the arteries, which led to some heart disease. And that was a big, uh, it, was, it was big news. So you shouldn't take calcium supplements because it will it will kill you, right? So of course, nothing is as dramatic as that. We always come back to the idea that nutrients should be found in the food where they come as opposed to taking supplements and isolating them. But what you can do if you really do need a calcium supplement is to take it with other nutrients that, that, that are supposed to come with it by taking a higher quality supplement. And I'll try to find a link about that that I can post. Um, I know I've published something in... Um, in the magazine about that because it made me pretty angry. Something else to note is that when you're when you're looking at the amounts that you're taking in in a vitamin, when you're looking at that five thousand percent of your daily value, it's important to know that you can overdo it on certain vitamins. When you take a lot of B vitamins, and I bring up B vitamins because they are often mega dosed, you are generally going to excrete them, meaning, go in, they come out. Whatever your body doesn't need comes out, which means you're making really super expensive pee. And you know you're doing that when you look in the toilet and it's neon, okay? You're always going to get that when you take some amount of, vit of B vitamins, you're going to get that neon color. But you wanna really mitigate that. You wanna, you wanna take a, an amount that's closer to what your body needs. There are certain vitamins that you can overdose on. These are the fat soluble vitamins that will actually build up in your system rather than being excreting and can cause problems. Those are vitamins A, D, E, and K. These are your fat soluble vitamins. It is very, very common right now to mega dose vitamin D. Um, a lot of people are very low in it and being low in vitamin D has been associated with all kinds of different diseases. So people are mega dosing. What you need to know about vitamin D is that a normal dose, normal, is about 400 IU per day. And that's IU international units. There are certain risk factors to having low vitamin D. Um, dark skin color, for example, means you're going to be absorbing your, your vitamin D from the sun less because that, that pigment gets in the way. If you live in the north of the United States, above a certain parallel, I think it's the 33rd, I don't even remember. Or if you live in Arizona, why Arizona is sunny? Well, it's because we stay inside or we stay covered up. I did a whole nap time nutrition on vitamin D, so you can go back and look at that if you're more interested in that. But the reason I bring it up now is to caution you against mega dosing. You wanna take an, a, a number, take a supplement that's appropriate for your vitamin D status. So how do you know your vitamin D status? Go get checked. It's very easy. If you, if you have a good vitamin D level, if you fall within the desired range, you're going to take about 400 IU per day, which will be found in your multivitamin 
and in your sun exposure and in your food, and it's not going to be an issue. If your vitamin D is low, then exact supplementation needs to be based on the amount of vitamin D that you specifically need. You, and that's why you need to see your primary healthcare practitioner in order to get an appropriate recommendation based on your status and your biology. So let's talk about some, uh, some, some fun controversies. While I'm on the subject of vitamin D, we have D2, D3, there is D1, but nobody supplements that. So here's the thing, vitamin D when it comes through the sun has to hit different organs in order to activate. It has to hit your liver and your kidneys. So if you have functioning liver and kidneys, you're fine taking D2. If you have a problem with your liver or kidneys, you definitely wanna listen to the advice of your healthcare practitioner, but you're gonna be taking D3. Um, the recent research shows that either D2 or D3 can boost your serum level, but taking D3, which is the most activated form, is going to cause more sustainability of that level. So it really depends where you are. For most people, it's not a concern, D2 versus D3, but if you are significantly under where you should be as far as your CRMD levels, then you probably wanna be taking D3 in order to boost and maintain adequate vitamin D levels. Folate versus folic acid. I did a whole nap time nutrition on that, so I will refer you back to that. Um, I always encourage folate versus folic acid because folate is naturally occurring, whereas folic acid in general is a synthetic form that's, that's not as easily absorbed and, and utilized, and especially if you have the MTHFR gene mutation, which I did a nap time nutrition on that as well, and you can check the comment section for all these other segments so you can look back, refer back to them if they, uh, if they're interesting to you. So if you have the MTHFR gene mutation, that means that you're going to really focus on folate and probably take it as M 5-MTHF, the form. Um, okay, so B12 is another controversy. It's a B vitamin. A lot of people are supplementing it for energy. I won't get into that in, in this segment. A lot of times that's unnecessary, but it comes in, in a couple of different forms. There's methylcobalamin or cyanocobalamin. And both of them have their, their reasons, reasons that you should take them. But cyanocobalamin is the synthetic form. Much like folate versus folic acid, you have methylcobalamin versus cyanocobalamin. So it's been proven that the synthetic is actually absorbed better, but it's also excreted better, which means, yeah, your body takes it and says, yay, and then pees it out. So it's it, it may not be very effective um, as far as having a meaningful impact on your vitamin B12 levels. If you're deficient, you wanna to speak to your doctor because that cyanocobalamin is better absorbed, but then methylcobalamin stays in your system better. So if you're significantly deficient, your doctor may, or your, diet, your doctor or dietitian may put you on a combination of cyanocobalamin and methylcobalamin, but in most cases, the methylcobalamin is really going to be your effective supplementation. Vitamin B is found mainly in meat sources, but you can also find it in certain vegan sources, such as um, sauerkraut that's been actually pickled, traditional pickle, uh, because it's a fermented food. And I believe in kombucha and also um, nutritional yeast. These are these are vegan sources of B12, and you can you can find those there. Um, avoid sugar sweetened vitamins. Okay, I, you know that I don't bash sugar. I'm not a sugar shamer, but it's a vitamin. So I prefer to have my sugar in ice cream form, not in vitamin form. And you may choose to do the same. A lot of these supplements out there are, um, they, they, there's a risk of having cavities, especially the gummies and the sugar coated ones. Uh, but, but a lot of these, so I've been holding up Pure Pals. This is just one that we use in my house. I like it, it has iron because there was a concern. Um, you can do what you want with that. But it's got a natural cherry flavor and it's sweetened with xylitol. And that's, it's a fake sugar, it's a sugar alcohol and it tastes sweet, but it doesn't, um, it's not going to cause dental caries. In fact, xylitol has been proven to help prevent um, cavities. So micronutrients and drug interactions. This is a big thing. This is why you always want your entire healthcare team to know what you've been taking and what you, what you are planning to take because there are certain drug interactions. If you have a blood clotting 
problem and you're on blood thinners, your doctor needs to know how much vitamin E and vitamin K you're taking. Vitamin K is named from, I believe it was the Danish um, coagulant because it causes the blood to thicken. And in that language, that coagulant starts with the K. Vitamin E is a blood thinner. And so you wanna make sure that those are always in balance. It, it's not really a concern for most people, but if you have certain, uh, certain health conditions or you're on certain medications, it really does become a meaningful conversation to have with your healthcare practitioner, which is why you always want to be upfront and transparent on what you're taking. So that was a lot of information. And that was, uh, that was information that was mainly, well, it was for adult vitamins, for kid vitamins as well. And if you have any questions or comments, please do so in the comment section. I would love to hear it. And join me for Naptime Nutrition. I have now changed the time from one o'clock to 1.15 because my little guy started preschool. And it's just a little bit less stressful to have that extra buffer. So 1.15 every Tuesday, that's Arizona time. So currently that's the same as West Coast time. It's 4.15 p.m. East Coast time. And if you have any suggestions on topics or any questions that you have, please feel free to comment in the comment section. And you will see me back here next Tuesday. And if you are a Phoenix local, please come to Toddler Test Kitchen. We've been having a blast. All the classes have been selling out. So make sure to get your tickets now, toddlertestkitchen.net. And we have a lot of fun. So I will see you next Tuesday for Nap Time Nutrition, 1.15 p.m. Arizona time right here. And to look up my extensive video library, look at naptimenutrition.com and just use the search for anything and everything. I've got a lot of content up there now. So see you next week. Thank you.